Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel, and I didn't think I'd be producing another video, but here I am once again. So ignore the patch over my right eye. It's just that I have extreme pain and uh, looking at a computer longer than even 10 or 15 minutes gives me tremendous pain in the right eye. So anyway, and the left eye isn't very good. So <laughs> I'll have to do the best I can with what I've got. Now, one of my subscribers, uh, someone called Shank, he asked me recently about constructive analysis. So, first of all, it should raise a red flag if you hear, uh, if you read what it's all about. Now, constructive analysis tries to uh, get rid of uh, real numbers. <laughs> so. In other words, it's it's a type of analysis, but not real analysis, rather constructive in terms of uh, still uh, having real numbers in quotes, but treating them as rational approximations. Now, uh, it's just another failure of set theory, and I think the mainstream is beginning to realize that set theory and the ZF axioms have been a complete failure, just as uh, the education of mathematics has been in the last who knows, 100 years at least. So what about constructive analysis? So is it valid? Is it worth studying? Let's see. Let's begin. Now, I've constructed this little applet for you here. And uh, I'm using the function f of x is equal to x squared, which is really just a parabola. And what's happening here is I'm showing you that all that happens in the function is that you're taking a magnitude, which in this case is a distance. This blue line is a distance, right? And you're scaling it to another magnitude, which is a red line, which is the y-ordinate. So that's all you're doing. You don't really need uh, real analysis for this because the function doesn't take uh, the function doesn't necessarily need to take a rational number. For example, it doesn't need to take 3 and give you 9. It can take a magnitude without any measure. For example, like pi or square root of 2 or any other magnitude. By the way, square root 2 and pi are not numbers. They are incommensurable magnitudes. And the Greeks called them such because they have no common measure with any other magnitude except themselves. The word irrational comes from the Greek word alogos, which simply means unable to write in the form of a ratio of two magnitudes, which have a common measure, by the way. Not just two magnitudes, but two magnitudes with a common measure. For example, pi itself is a ratio of magnitudes, but those magnitudes have no common measure, right? Because really pi is realized when an attempt is made to measure the circumference with the diameter as unit. Similarly, square root 2 is realized when an attempt is made to measure the hypotenuse, hypotenuse of an isosceles right angle triangle with equal legs, right? So neither of these are actually numbers. Now, as you know, all that's happening here in this function here, it's you don't have, you don't necessarily care about set theory where you have domain or range or any of the other stupid terms that you learn about, illogical terms, and uh, the very fact that you rely so much on those uh, uh, flawed ZFC axioms, etc. You don't need set theory and you don't need ZFC and you don't need any of the mathematics that you've been taught in the last 100 years because uh, all that's happening in terms of a function is that you're taking a certain value and scaling it to another value, as you see over here, okay? So all I'm doing is I'm showing you what the square function does to a given magnitude. So the function is taking as input the blue magnitude, which is this distance down here where I'm pointing, and translating it into the red distance. And that's basically it. Now, you see, these problems have arisen because mainstream academics have never understood what the definition is of number, okay? There's a very simple definition. Forget about that idiot Frege and uh, anyone else who came before me and after Euclid. A number is the name given to a measure 
that describes a magnitude and a magnitude can be anything as you see in this example here it's lengths but it's lengths or distances but it can be areas mass by the way these lengths here are actual uh, distances they're not numbers okay unless they're rational numbers unless they're distances which can be measured by the chosen unit or the standard unit so because mainstream academics have never understood the concept of number there was this uh, uh, path to the flaw theory of limits and real analysis and irrational numbers and real numbers there's no such thing as an irrational number because a number is the name given to the measure that describes a magnitude and you can find all these things in my free ebook <coughs> to which i will give you a link and you can download it and there's a lot of information in there that will teach you real mathematics and not the mathematics that you've been learning in the past i don't know how long so now uh, as a final note um, i'm going to upload this also on youtube as well as my bitchu channel so please subscribe to my bitchu channel i don't know if i will be producing more videos but on the rare occasion like now and i have the energy and i feel well i'm able to produce one or two videos so so subscribe so that you can be informed now uh that's pretty much it so i will leave you with those thoughts i don't think constructive analysis is worth studying just as real analysis is not worth studying and I hope that you have learned something from this small presentation. Uh, the new calculus is proof that you don't need the false construct or the mythical construct of irrational number or a uh, real number, which can only be possible if you have both rational and irrational numbers that are valid constructs. The Edekin cuts and Cauchy sequences are not valid constructs. So <coughs> that's pretty much it for now. My name is John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Until next time, goodbye, my friends.